Okay, so it's Maggie Megan's and it is seven o'clock. And since I come from a, a military family, right now we're 10 minutes late. Um, anyway, uh, today, well, first of all, thank you all so much for coming. I'm sitting in my office. A few of my agents are here with me. Um, you know, our office is right here at 36 Chatham Road in Short Hills. It's right next to the post office. So if you see in the background that very swishy looking red gold thing, you'll know that we're getting ready to decorate our windows, which we do um, four or six times a year, maybe for um, Chinese New Year. So please stop by and tell us what you think of our windows. They should be up and ready to rock and roll uh, Monday, Tuesday. We have some fun things that we're gonna do with them. So we're very excited about that. And we're even more excited because um, thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight, we have two very, very special men, uh, Tom Partello and Bob Dussold, who are part of Stage Right Homes. And why that's so important to, you know, people talk a lot about staging homes and how important that is. Well, I can tell you something. It's very, very, very important to have a home staged. Um, so much has changed uh, in the 25 years that I've been selling real estate. And uh, we never staged homes, we never painted, we never moved furniture in and out. It was like, this is my stuff and that's how it is. Well, today the competition, competition is really fierce. And even though it is a seller's market, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end, um, it's important that you go out with your best foot forward. That, you know, that whole idea of there's only one chance to make a good first impression is really true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the gentleman speak to us and why staging is important and ask him a few questions. If you have any questions yourself, please don't hesitate to add them in the chat box. You can add it to our chat box. And then at the end, we'll take questions and I can even give you a little five minute synopsis of what's happening in the market and the market is very much on fire. So um, with that being said, Bob and Tom, you ready? Where'd they go? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The office looks nice and clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on, guys. Bob and Tom. It says it logged them off. Hold on one second. Boys, log back on if you can. Um, in the meanwhile, I'll talk about the market a little bit um, while we're waiting for them to get back on. <clears throat> if you don't get our, um, our quarterly mailers or if you don't get our weekly updates, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I know everybody's always inundated with so much email and spam, et cetera. But if you're really wondering what the market is doing today, don't hesitate to reach out. We run numbers. It's um, a daily thing, but we do have we do have charts that we send out on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and of course, on a quarterly basis. And I'll talk back to that in the end. Guys, you're back. Welcome back. Um, I want you to just give me your, uh, your little like too many elevator pitch of how you came to staging and how that morphed for you um, business wise and what it, what it represents today from when, when you first started. Okay, so um, I'll start and Bob can jump in. So I'm Tom Bartello, as Maggie mentioned at the top. Um, so I worked for many, many years in corporate America um, in human resources and project management. And um, some of you may remember a little company called Lehman Brothers. Well, I was there until the bitter end and beyond. Um, and that really, you know, that, that event really changed my thinking about the direction that, you know, I wanted, I wanted to go in because Things were so dicey at that point. I knew that I had to diversify my skills, and I had, you know, kicked around different ideas and had kind of done some staging stuff for friends on the side, and and decided that uh, it would be worth exploring. So I took some classes, decided to start, um, you know, a small business that was part time uh, initially. This was back in well, Lehman was two thousand eight, so around two thousand nine, um, and you know just started growing and decided that I wanted to work my way out of corporate America and move into, you know, doing something I really enjoyed and, and um, being my own boss. So that's kind of the, the genesis of how we got into the staging. And Tom, you do have a construction background because of your family growing up. So you do yes. have a good vision for that as well. And do, in addition to 
staging, you can, if somebody has a little project that they wish to have done, you can, you know, help pick out tile, redo some kitchen, a little facelift, maybe something with the bathroom, some that that type of background as well. So, so that's part of your um in your in your toolbox, as it were. Exactly. Yeah. We we have besides this the stage right homes, the staging company, we have uh, Partello Renovations that does a lot of client work and and quite a bit of the work that we do is helping people get their houses ready for sale and there's a difference but uh you know and i know we're going a little off direction here but there's a difference between fully renovating your kitchen um because you want to stay there and how do we do a facelift on your kitchen because you know you want it to look good for sale so as an example it's 2021 and yep. Bob, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to get into this staging business as well? Well, we moved to Maplewood in 2002 from a tiny 600 square foot apartment in Manhattan. Which is big by Manhattan standards, 600 so square feet. When we moved out here, I w <laughs> it was so thrilling to have space, really. And, and you know, we've always been, I've always been an actor. That was my background. And um so I've worked on a lot of sets, you know, all over the world, all over the country. And um, I just love to design spaces and sets and um, create, uh, basically staging is creating a show, you know, it's creating a inviting space with a theme. And that's my thing, you know, I've directed a bunch of shows too and, um, and, you know, when, when we moved out here, we would go, they used to have these nights where you could put out furniture <laughs> at, on the street. Junk night. It was junk night. And junk night. we would find Eames chairs. We would mid find mid-century stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And you would rehab that furniture. I would get off the train from work, from my corporate job. And Bob would pick me up and I'd be in my suit and we would have our flashlight and I'd be running up the street looking to see what put out. So we have a love of furniture and a love of design. design. And we and there's still a few of those pieces that we even, that we rehabbed and we still use. I see, today. I see the pop of color back there. Um, yeah. Having grown up in South Orange and lived in uh, Maplewood as well, um, I do remember junk night, I, all yeah. my childhood, and I remember people putting stuff out on and people coming in, like you're saying, scavenging and, and yeah. finding some really wonderful pieces, that's true. People didn't know what they had no. and what they were getting rid of or they couldn't be bothered, and so it was interesting. It was an interesting time. Yeah, well, and here you go. So staging, <laughs> why it's so important. When I started in this business, as I said earlier, 25 years ago, there was staging, what was staging, and all of a sudden, it seemed like it started out in California and it made its way, um, you know, to the East Coast. Now I've heard stories where in California, we don't do this here in New Jersey, uh, but I've heard stories in California where they've taken homes and just totally ripped them apart and put in brand new kitchens, brand new bathrooms, brand new everything, just to sell it. We don't have to do that here, thank goodness. Right. Um, but I, I think they're a little over the top, but. It, I guess what happened is it started there, it morphed its way over here. And so we've just taken it to our own level. I'd like to be able to talk about, um, <clears throat> Les, do you mind opening up the slideshow? Cause let's talk a little, we're gonna share our screen everybody. Hold on a sec. Just two seconds, PowerPoint. Do we have it? And awesome. Ooh. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Um, so um, we switch colors, by the way, on our website. We hope you like it. It's that Hermes orange. We just kind of like it. Um, we thought it would be something fun to do, especially if you've been so um, stuck inside with COVID. We just needed some kind of something to shake it up a little bit. So we hope you like that. Um, let's go to our next, why staging matters. So <clears throat> gentlemen, why does staging matters matter? Well, you know, um, <clears throat> so staging matters because the, the first thing that somebody's gonna see about your listing is in, in, in the digital age, right? Which we've been yeah. in for many decades at this point, um, is the pictures. 
And if the pictures online don't look good, then people are gonna people are gonna bypass your listing. So, you know, the, the goal is really for everybody, your whole team who's who's working with your listing is to, you know, get the highest price for your house in the shortest time, right? That's the goal for every client. And that's where staging comes in to, you know, you're you're presenting it at its best. Right, right. So um, I very often say to people um, that if they, the minute they put their home on the market, the minute you do put your home on the market, it's no longer your home. It's really the public's home. It's yeah. it's everyone else looking at it. And very similar to what you're saying. And I'm sure, you know, we're all products of HGTV. We see it all going on very cheaply. I might add down in Texas, but we see what they, the Joanna Gaines of the world and all this such. Yeah. Um, very often when people are on a digital platform, whether it's their computer or their cell phone, you're getting about five seconds to be able to make an impression on them. Yep. And they're they're taking their phone and just scrolling like this. And if they don't like what they see, they're on to the next steps. They're like, yep, not Perfect. wasting my time. Um, don't have the time to do this. Want something moving ready or, um, you know, just come in with your suitcases and toothbrushes is what I kind of say. And they're, they're used to, to seeing, and I, I think that last bullet point got to that, they're used to, to seeing professionally presented homes, right? And, and so it's become a, you know, it's become that, that you know, people want to see, they, they, want, they want to see the lifestyle. They don't want to see how they're actually going to live in a house. They want to see how they think, you know, the, the idealized version of it. And everybody's you know now presenting houses at a, at a much higher level of professionalism and so that's all becomes part of the, the the you know the process of getting your house to look its best and maggie you know too oh sorry that you know, a minimal investment is going to get you a big return mm -hmm. for staging you know and i think that's really important um that if you do a cost benefit analysis yeah. you're going to come out quite ahead. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the, the um, audience will see on this slide, there's some statistics around that, you know, 85% of staged homes, they sell for between five and 23% over the listing price. Um, and you can see with an average investment of 1% of the listing price, you get a return of investment of five to 15 um, with a little bit more 1.5%, you can go from 15 to 25. Now, though, this, this is from a, um, a, a national survey done by the you know real estate staging association so these are national numbers but you know in a market like ours those numbers can be even a little better let me ask you a question how often are you going into a home that had been listed before with a different broker and all of a sudden this other broker either myself or someone else out in the field is bringing you into a house because it didn't sell the first time. It was on the market for 180 days, maybe 365 days, and it didn't sell and nothing changed, photos, nothing. How often are you getting called into those homes? That happens on a regular basis. That happens, you know, uh, numerous times during a, during a selling season. You know, if we look at the seasons, spring, fall, that happens numerous times and, you know, a house will sit even in a good market if it's not marketed properly, if it's not, you know, presented properly um, and presented against its competition properly, right? Because that's really, that's really what you're getting at. What's your competition? If everybody is, you know, upgrading and painting and, and you know, staging and you're not and your house needs it, you're going to sit. And um, so, Oftentimes, people have to have that experience where their house sits, mm -hmm. and then we come in, and at this point now they're willing to, you know, make some make some investment in painting and updating, and have a stage, and then in two weeks their house is under or, contract. Or that weekend. Or that weekend <laughs> after we're finished. So staging is almost part of the whole marketing package, as it were. Yeah. It really is. In addition to you know, the incredible brochures and photography and videography and drone shots and, and these Matterport ads that show 3D of your home, home of your home. <clears throat> Staging is just a, an additional piece of that marketing. It's really yep. what it sounds like. Absolutely. And, and our, uh, I think our rule of thumb is when you are living in your house, 
paint it whatever color you want, make it exactly what you want. But when you're putting it on the market, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to let go of a lot of stuff that you're, you know, married to as far as your style. And some of those situations are people who either staged it themselves or didn't stage it at all. Um, and then, you know, we come in and a lot of people say, why didn't we do this six months ago? You know, because so the upfront investment, I think, is really crucial. I understand. And, you know, I like a couple of times you've said um, it's a competition. Mm -hmm. I'm wickedly competitive. For those people who know me, they know I'm wickedly, wickedly competitive. You don't get to come from a big Irish Catholic family and not be that way because you're trying to get attention all the time. So um, <laughs> I think that's important. It, it, your, your motivation a real estate broker's motivation is going to match the seller's motivation as well. Or, and in addition to that, pricing is going to match condition of the home, right? You can't, you can't get that premium price if you're, if you're in a 1970s look, I guess I want to say. Right. I, I mean, I think that's really important. So you came up with a to-do list for us, which is one, making essential repairs and, and, we always do a walkabout around the house, right? Because we yeah. will point things out that we seem to notice that we think is very important. Um, paint, paint, paint. It's always important to have just like a nice fresh coat of paint. And very often I'll say, um, you know, friends of mine and myself included, I had a red dining room. I mean, listen, red dining rooms are in that beautiful red damask yeah. wallpaper and it was gorgeous and loved it. We all had it and uh, it's out. Right. I painted uh, I loved it while I had it, but it was just time to 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 move on. Um, so a coat of paint always just puts just a fresh it's, look to it, doesn't it? And you can do so much with it. You know, it 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 makes a fresh palette. It's not just the walls. You know, you walk into a dated kitchen. You painting it transforms dated cabinets. Same with the bathroom. Painting bathroom vanities can transform the look of the of the space. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's one of the, you know, it's not cheap to paint, but it's one of the cheaper investments you can make um, to, to really change the look of, of your home. Right. Well, I always say to people in terms of staging, uh, staging or painting, it, it's going to be much cheaper than your first price reduction that I'm going to ask That's you right. for if we don't sell after the first two years. And yep. especially today, in today's market, ladies and gentlemen, we are in one of the biggest sellers market. COVID hit, and we can talk about that. But last March, you know, the world changed as we all know it. And um, thank goodness, real estate agents were essential workers. Um, and I can't tell you these homes are flying off like nobody's business yet. Not all of them. Not all of them. So it's always interesting to me, those that don't fly off, um, usually have a very dated look to them. Um, one of the things I also, we talk about is declutter, 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 and declutter. Yep. And we, we think that's really, really, really important. Yep. Um, and also like you're saying, you know, hire the professionals. That's you guys. That's us. Uh, and, but, but also, you know, when they hire, when a seller hires your teammate, you guys bring, you bring us, you bring professional organizers, if that's what, what yeah. is needed. Yeah. You bring, you know, you bring, we, we can bring the, the professionals to do the painting and the upgrades. So it's a whole team effort. Um, and, oh, sorry, and, and we, sorry. we also have an eye to what you are gonna have to face with inspection issues. And that's where you get to, to one know, of the make essential repairs. That's so important. So we're all on the same team with that because even if it's not, if there's a spot on your ceiling, somebody's going to, and it's not water damage, someone will An think. An inspector's going to say potential water damage. Right. So, and then you have an issue. So we have a, a definite keen eye to partnering with you, Maggie, and your team and making sure that all of those things are addressed at the same time that we get a staging plan together. You know, I think one of the hardest things that we see, and, and I've been seeing it lately, is um, that transition from, okay, we've got our house, and now we're bringing it to market. And all of a sudden, it's not your house anymore, even though it is your house. And, and when you don't sell right away, I say this to my agents all the time, 
when someone's home doesn't sell right away, it's like telling them their kid's ugly. It's just yeah. not good. It is yeah. not good. They just, you know, because it they love it. And so why wouldn't everybody else love it? And um, that's that's why I think it is important that we do do the staging and that we try and get people to remove themselves emotionally from the home sale. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, it's just difficult. I understand that. And, and, and I think it is important that we bring you guys in there to be able to help them transition through that, whether it's putting away uh, pictures or changing the painting out or moving pieces of furniture. I, lately, we've had people that just don't want to move these pieces of brown furniture, which is very out. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, brown furniture is really, really, in fact, just the other night I was watching Antiques Roadshow and they were showing something from 2006, a piece of brown furniture and what the worth it was of it at this time. And I think there was something, it was like $6,000. And they were like, okay, and what's it selling for today? It was like, uh, uh, it was not good. It was down to like $1,500. I went all, and it was all this brown furniture that must have been mass produced. Yeah. Um, and so what, what are you seeing like the latest trends are? Ah, here you go. Like, here's the nice before and after. Yeah. Here you go. Um, so you had paneling taken down. There looks like 70s brown paneling. Is that correct? Right. Yep. And you ripped up carpet and it looks like the flooring you put down is some type of an engineer. It doesn't look like wood, is it? You know what, because this was an addition which was put over, you know, um, there was just subfloor underneath in sure. this part of the house. And, um, you know, the, the, the people, the, the folks selling it, it was an estate and they were on a, you know, a budget. And so we recommended this product called, it's called luxury vinyl flooring. And it, you know, it looks like wood, um, you know, as close to wood as you're going to get flooring, but it's easy to put down. It goes down quick. We, we do it a lot in basements, um, but this came out great, you know, and you can see that the furniture on the left side is obviously dated, but if you see those two pieces against the wall, those were um, just in the wrong space. Those are mid-century. Mid-century modern, right? Yeah. 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 And, and they're we, Danish modern. We, we moved them into the dining room and they looked great. And then, you know, as I said, it was an estate. So we, we hooked, we hooked um, the seller up with a friend of ours who deals in mid-century modern furniture and they made a deal and she bought them and sold them in her shop like immediately. So some furniture, a lot of the furniture as you're saying, Maggie, it, it's, you know, like the brown furniture doesn't work anymore. But mid-century modern is like a classic. It and you can't, works. And by the way, you can't even give some of this stuff away. You can't give away these china cabinets. I, it, nobody wants them. I'll tell you something of note to me that's interesting is the on the left, you notice that window treatment there which is a very dated look, those slats. Yep. And on the right, you didn't even put a window treatment, did no, you? No, no window well, treatments. And, and look that you really see the tree, you know, you see the trees and because the furniture is all lined up against the wall. In the so, first picture. But in the, right, in the first picture. And in the second picture, you look straight out at that gorgeous view, which is what sells your property. Right, nature bringing in. Tell us what you <laughs> think that says. Oh, I remember this house. Yeah. So oh. this this is this was I I think a, a you know this is one of my favorite houses. It's Me such too. a unique house. Um, and so Maggie, this was you know one of our recent ones that we did. Yeah. You. Um, and it's it, this house has such cool um, you know antique barn wood. All the beams you see on the right, but you didn't notice them with the with the colors that were painted. The red dining room. The red and and the the window treatments and uh, you know the shades on the chandelier it was all very dated and the, and the you could see the dark wood table that's right on the left. The yeah. Yeah. So we you know we brought in some you know the the farmhouse updated you know modern farmhouse furniture. Um, we, you know, brought in a lot of pops of greens and blues, and we can talk about that a little later, I think, on the color slide. Um, but, you know, we we transformed this space. It looks much bigger than it is. Photo list. Let's show them that. So that was that was us in the house. That's, um, an, action, that's an action shot. Maggie and Bob working, strategizing. <laughs> strategizing what we were going to do. So that, that 
big old thing were behind Bob and I. That got out. Yes. They just got rid of that, right? That nobody even wanted. What did we do with that? Did that go in? We put uh, that. She, she, you know, she got rid of that. She got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. she got rid of it. I mean, the solo cups. That's funny there, but that was just an action shot. But what a difference that paint made. Now you kept the fireplace the same. We replaced yep. uh, the picture above it. And you move the furniture all out. So you could see that on the right hand side, the top, that's the dining room straight on that used to be red, but you painted everything white. It's just yep. like that coat of paint, that, that pop of plain white, but it just, it looks so fresh and but clean. It, it, we and recommended not painting the woodwork, not, you the, know, the, the bottom, beans. because that's, that's part of the charm is the, the yeah. beans. You can see in this picture, how yeah. the, the shiplap was already painted, but it was painted like a dull taupey color. So we just painted over that with a nice fresh coat of like, you know, white dove. Um, and it just made the floors pop, it made everything pop. So what was really nice about this house, do we have one more of this one? No, was that was it? What was really nice about this house is we put this on the market and we sold for $100,000 over asking price. We had a multiple bid situation. We, um, and it was all, the seller, I'm like, look, I have the guys to do this for you. Let me bring them in. And I call it obeying. She obeyed. She listened to what you told her. Yeah. She yeah. didn't do she didn't do 80% of it. She went all in 100%. And she couldn't have been nicer. She was so nice to yeah. do it. And when we walked in there, my idea, at least what I saw in my bit head was Hamptons. It looked like it could be a house in the Hamptons with all of those windows. And I think it Kind of, it looks like that. Now. Well, the, the cool you know? thing about this house, too, is it, along that back wall where the couch is, what you can't see is there's windows that overlook all woods. So right. it's very nature, this house, you know? And, and this just, house like, happened yeah. to have been on a busier street for the town that it was in, and we had multiple bids. So that didn't, I, I, I was thrilled. And so were, the, so were the sellers, by the way. It's so lovely. Yeah, it made all the difference. This one, so because of COVID, so much has changed in our world last March. Yep. Everybody all of a sudden is working from home. Mm -hmm. People are needing space. Um, this was school kid, space. Yeah, little kid who wanted to have, you know, if you're learning from home with that hybrid learning, you created a space for this child by just you you use some of the things in here and mm -hmm. but took a lot out and then moved things around. And made something like kind of really fun. Oh, with thank you. I thought um, our theme was uh, animals real and imagined. So uh, I got, bought some pipe cleaners and I made some animals with a pipe clean. I bought her all the stuff for the desk that would attract her to sitting at her desk and learning because and the wallpaper too. and the wallpaper which is just the coolest wallpaper i think um this was more of a design specific design um uh job and i just had a ball doing it i i we had such a blast um um and you know it's all sort of curated from all over the place you know um there's a crumpled up paper chandelier in the corner with a rocking chair for her mm -hmm. and a little basket for her to put her stuff in. And, um, you know, we really wanted to, in a furry desk chair and a unicorn lamp. And, you know, we just wanted to make it really, really fun. And this highlights, you know, what people are looking for now and it translates into staging. People are looking for spaces and houses where their kids are going to be able to focus on school where maybe they need one or two dedicated office spaces um and so we're you know we're we're starting to, you know not starting we have been um putting those elements into our staging yeah. and this kind of you know this is a hybrid design project but we wanted to show it for for that reason about people are looking now to, to see where their kids are gonna focus uh, yeah. at school. And the best compliment that we got was um, her daughter who's like seven now, how old? Seven. She um, walked into the room when she saw it, it was a big surprise. And then she said, mom, get out of my room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's another thing. Not everybody's thinking about moving, right? I mean, some people wanna stay put. Um, but you can help them with that too. If somebody wanted a room staged or just a little, you know, a little freshness about something, yeah. you could help them with that. Or if there's some kind of a, 
a fixing that needs doing in a kitchen or a bathroom, you'd be more than happy to help people. We'll give your oh, information absolutely. at the end clearly because not everybody's going to move that's on this call, but it's good to get ideas. And of course, ideas change, as we will see, because I think, oh, this, oh, this is important. This is staging a vacant home. So for those yeah. people who do have homes that are vacant, maybe they've moved out of their home, how important it is to stage a vacant home. And this was one that you all did do. Um, this was one of our new constructions that one of our builders had. And uh, I think it looks fabulous. Just very simple. And that was not an easy room to stage. No, it wasn't. And you can see, I, 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 to, to my eye, the before picture, if I was looking at that online, and he still had some construction stuff going on there. But if I was looking at that online, I would say, that doesn't look big enough to fit a couch. Right. Right. And right. so we show people, here's how you can make this space work. Right. And you don't want people walking in. You know, there's a mis misconception out there about vacant spaces. The pictures of vacant spaces, they look, they do not look that good. And they always appear smaller. And in person, oftentimes vacant rooms will look smaller to, to a prospective buyer. They'll think, I don't know where I could put my couch. I don't know where, you know, what wall would my bed go on? And they start ticking these sort of boxes off of why this house doesn't work for me. And then you've lost them. Right. So, you know, you show them, you paint the picture, right? You show them the magazine um, that they want to live in. <laughs> and also just real quickly, a lot of these are open concept f first floors that you really have to give a very specific very specific definition to what each space is because if you just leave it open nobody can imagine what they will do with it so we right. designed we have a lot of open you two chairs and a big couch and then behind that an eat-in area yeah four chairs around that table mm -hmm. yep so that was pretty good Les. oh that was it so that's the that same space yeah, that's the same house. And this was the separate dining room. And you can see the before shot, that, that room. I know it's a different angle, but that room looks so much smaller yeah. without furniture in it. Mm -hmm. 100%. Do we go to the colors next, Les? OK, so I did want, we wanted to talk about this because Pantone every year talks about the different colors. And so it appears for 2021, we have ultimate gray and illuminating. Now, I always laugh when I go into people's homes and I'm like, you know, all these kids want these 50 shades of gray as I call it. And it seems that they still do want the 50 shades of gray. Like what's with gray? What is going on with gray still in the palette? What's that about? Well, listen, I'll tell you a little story. I have a couple of stories. I remember probably I'll say 30 years ago, Mm -hmm. I remember walking into someone's house and they had gray carpet. And I thought it was the coolest thing I ever saw, right? And gray and white, they just have that staying power. They just have that staying power, right? So it's always going to be a color you that- think, You think gray will always be enough in some form or another? Yeah. I think that you know it'll ebb and flow, but I think we'll we'll see it um, around for a long time. And right now we're in a period of gray ebbing, um, but you know I think that I think gray is going to be around for a long time, just like white has been. You know, white kitchens, classic and timeless. They've been around for you know probably many of our grandmothers had a white kitchen. Right. Well, they say fifty percent of the kitchens that are put in every year are white. They say right. that. Right, so from a kitchen designer point point of view, and we keep up with the colors with yeah. also with um, accessories, pillows, yeah. and um, land. You know, we, we pop a lot of current colors. I mean, it was sort of like a blushy, rosy color that was popular. Millennial pink. Millennial pink. And apparently, it's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so we would pop. We would use those trends and just pop instead of saying paint your walls millennial pink, which nobody you know, probably needed to do right. to sell their house, we would just bring in things that would pop those, those colors. colors. And, and I think here you see 
sort of, you know, and we'll get into that a little, a little later, but you have the, the opposite of the gray, which is the, you know, Pantone this year, they came out with two colors because of kind of what's happening, right, in our world. And they're like, people are looking for the counterbalance, Sunshine. right, which is Light. the counterbalance of the gray, which is the, the you know, the bright yellow. So then here's, we kind of talked about this, you know, designers have been declaring the decline of gray for years, but it still has staying power and different shades come into play, you know, and there's, there's purple grays, there's green grays, there's blue grays, and, and all of those shades have, have their place in, you know, I think in staging and prepping your home. But I think this year, 2021, we will see return of some vibrant colors. You know, people want, you know, after what's happened, in 2020, they want some positivity. And so we're gonna see that in home furnishings. And, and as Bob was saying, you know, we bring in a lot of those colors and accessories so that you don't have to commit to a whole full palette of crazy colors. We bring it in in accessories and, you know, you, 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 what we're trying to do is not go over the top because we don't want people to have a visceral reaction from a staging and prepping perspective. And a little story I can tell you, we're, we're working on a project now, a renovation project where um, a client is bringing her elderly mother to live with her. So we're renovating some space and her mother's favorite color is like a peachy pink. And she, um, she's, you know, we picked out a few shades and her mother picked one and the client's like, I'm, I'm just gonna go with this. She goes, I can't stand this color, but I'm going to do it for my mother. She goes, it reminds me of being a little kid and our living room and dining room were painted that color. And all I could think of was it was like baby aspirin pink. Oh yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Hey, Joseph. Yeah. you know, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to avoid, you don't want to paint a color or use a lot of an accent color like that. That's going to create a visceral reaction in a buyer who's going to go, Oh, I can't stand that color and turn around. So we use, you know, we use a lot of greens and blues because those are colors that are found, you know, people aren't gonna have such a visceral reaction to those colors because nature. green is everywhere, it's nature, it's the color of life. Blue is the color of the sky and the color of oceans and lakes, it's all around us, right? So people connect to those colors more readily than they might to, you know, a salmon-y pink color, for example. So. You know, we, we try to, from a staging perspective, we try to use a lot of those colors to, to help people make that connection to home. Tell me this. Um, so here we are telling everyone, okay, we're moving all your furniture out and we're going to put it in a pod or we're going to put it in your garage and we're going to bring in our stuff. You know, we've had some pushback a little bit. So help, help everyone, uh, the ladies and gentlemen this evening to understand about how you handle all your furniture and with the COVID and you know, is it safe to bring in furniture? And let's talk a little bit about that. So, because well, sometimes that'll come up for us. We, sure. we own the furniture, first of all. You know, we the furniture the is not, a, a lot of stagers rent from other people or from designers. We own, we have a 5,000 square foot warehouse here in Maplewood. Mm. So we own all of it. And, you know, we, we are incredibly uh, stringent about safety protocols and you know we we won't go in a house if everybody isn't wearing a mask right. we just won't do it and our um, team is always masked up and you know we use lots of hand sanitizer and gloves um, if you need them booties yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. and the stuff is cleaned i mean we clean everything that we that we bring, bring into in someone's to house. your house so yeah. it's it will be completely clean when it's brought brought in that's perfect. That's and that's important, just from a safety perspective. I mean, again, I'm going to tell you who was thinking this way last March, last January, February. No one. And right. then life changed as we know it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kira asked us thoughts on stucco on the inside, and I know what she's talking about. Do you keep it? Do you get rid of it? Do you think that flat walls are in? Does it matter if it's English colonials? or a Tudor on the outside, if it's got those Tudor walls on the inside, do you get rid of them? What do you think? It's such a tough one. Is it, are, are we talking about like the cake frosting stucco um, on the inside? 
when you say cake frosting, is that from the 70s or is that from like the 20s, 30s? The 20s, 20s 30s. 30s. Yeah, yeah. We've been in the houses with that. Um, I don't know. It is expensive to do. I guess if it is the original stucco, do you think if it goes with the house, does it stay or do you? What would you do? Would you sheet rock over that? So do you scrape I'm, it off and start all over? I'm kind of a, a like if it's that kind of stucco that it's from like a 1920s Tudor. I'm a bit of a house purist on that. I know not everyone is, but I, I don't like to see those original details stripped out as much as you know a lot of people do. Um, the, the, if it's more like you know textures like that's been applied, um, you know we, we were just at a, a house today where the ceilings are, are all textured and you know we said you gotta you gotta just rid get rid of that. And it's not even the popcorn texture, it's more of like just a texture. And it's like, you know, people don't want to see that. So um, it, my mother did that. It was horrible. Every ceiling, this man came in with this five pound bucket of sludge. I don't know what it was. And he just, the ceiling, and it was like, it was the world. It was like so 70s, very 70s, I think. Oh, right? yeah. with, so, with, the, with the avocado panel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's funny, but we we often we we often take the you know the stucco out. Now sometimes it's it's you know it's a cost issue, right? If it's everywhere, you have to pick your pick your places strategically. I always say, you know, in a typical house, you walk in, your dining room and your living room are the first rooms you see. Those are your those are your rooms that you got to make the first best impression. Okay. And so, um, if it's if it's in those rooms and it's not in great condition, I would say yes. Let's let's work on that. And you probably you basically have to knock it down in sheetrock, right? Knock, knock down the plaster in sheetrock. Also, it's been my experience in my 25 years of doing this that the master bedroom and bath and the kitchen are very important rooms. Absolutely. If the kids' bedrooms are small, so be it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a like, lot of people open the door and go, it's a kid's bedroom, they'll survive, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but the master bedroom is important, even if it means switching out bed linens and, yeah. and fresh towels and- That's uh, what we do. That's I mean, what literally, we do. that's what we do. Yep. Absolutely. Matt Lizze, in or out? Matt Lizze coverlets um we do both really yeah it depends uh, a traditional sort of patterned one like if it's a traditional pattern kind of out but there's some like you know more contemporary ones that yeah you can we 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 use them mm -hmm. somebody asked if the designer needs help with the furniture can you rent it if the designer needs help with the furniture can you rent it can someone rent furniture can someone rent furniture who's not staging? We typically don't do that just because, you know, the pieces we buy are specific for staging. And, you know, they're not, they're, 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 they give a good look, but right. they, they wouldn't necessarily be like your highest quality piece. And it could also be a scale size as well, right? I mean, right. they're starting to make furniture that's smaller as well to fit in certain spaces. Yeah, absolutely. And just so you know, I mean, I'm, your clients know, um, and everybody on this wonderful call, when we give you a bid, the price is, includes moving everything in two months of rental uh, from when the staging is completed, and then moving it out. And so Normally, that's more than enough time in this market, particularly for selling your house, appraisal. Um, so um, that's all included. So there's no rental fee. Right, which is nice because a lot of uh, there, there's not a lot of you out there, quite frankly. There are not a lot of stagers, but there are um, most of them do a three month minimum. Right. And I, what I found, and I'm so glad to have you guys on, but what I found is that your your furniture, your things, I don't see them a lot of places. And so I kind of like that, that I don't, see, oh, this, you know, that you walk in and you think, I love it when you can walk into a house and think, is this staged or isn't it? You right. know, you have to stop for a second and think about it because right. some homes you walk in, you're like, oh my God, this is so staged. But a lot of them, you know, with yours, it's been my experience that they're not. Um, so we have a, uh, somebody who's asked, feeling on window treatments, yay or nay? Mm, that's a good question. It mm -hmm. depends on the window treatment. So um, 
when we staged, like you'll see in the, the, the one vacant that we showed, we, we had no window treatments, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that is because when a developer does a house, they don't want, they, they don't want us messing up their woodwork around the windows with window treatments, right? So that's part of it. But um, a lot of window treatments can, can end up looking dated. Like if you have the, the wood, the corny, fab sure yeah, the fabric covered balances, flags and jabos. Yes, all of that we always say goes. If you have some nice, just plain silk panels, um, depending on colors and style, you know, those are fine. Blinds are always in, like a good quality blind, right? Um, you don't necessarily need to go out and do all new window treatments. Oftentimes it's more a matter of paring them down, paring down what already exists. So if somebody does ask about that, wood blinds that are white with neutral walls showing trim, like Hunter Douglas silhouettes, that's all in. Yes. Classic. And those, yes. by the way, convey with the house, just so you know if you're moving, unless you specifically exclude a wood blind or Douglas silhouettes because they are attached to the home, they stay with the home. Same thing with ceiling fans. Yep. Um, somebody asked, how much time would it take to stage your home? We don't know, we'd have to see it, right? You guys would have to see it. It's like a doctor, he needs to see the x-ray. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> typically, I guess, you know, depending upon the rooms you're doing as well, not, you don't necessarily stage every room, do you? Right. You walk into a room and say, um, like the table behind me will say, you might say, you know, Maggie, I don't want it in this spot, but I think we could move that table over to this room. So sometimes you'll use what's there in addition to bringing in your own things. We, we try to use as much of a client's furnishings as possible because that yeah. helps keep the expense for the client down. Um, typically from, a, from what the client is seeing, if we're talking strictly staging, not doing any of the other work that needs to be done, repairs, painting, any updates, typical staging is one to two days, what the client sees. There's yeah. a whole bunch of planning and gathering of materials that happens before that. But when we show up on site, it's one to two days. And the process before, again, for people who don't know, is we come in normally with you, Maggie, and we do a walkthrough. So we get a very, very detailed list of what you need to do and what we will do literally for every single room. And we'll say, we will move that sofa over here. Keep that, please don't keep that. And we'll, we come up with a plan for both of us. And then when we execute the plan, it's very quick. So it's not a drawn out process because we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's another thing, light fixtures. I mean, right now sitting in my dining room is a horrible light fixture that has to go. I just don't have the bandwidth to go pick one. You guys all have to do it for me. Uh, <laughs> but one would say that you should change light fixtures that if they're no. dated looking or, you know, I don't know. A absolutely you want and that's an easy that's an easy here i'm just gonna give everybody a look here this is what happening. we're dealing this with is, here that's oh, what okay. happens when we go on zoom calls she needs attention she, needs she wants her attention amen yeah. um that is one of the easier sort of updates to do is light fixtures okay. and, and um you know we help clients pick light fixtures all the time. We do not go crazy and pick, you know, thousands of dollars worth of light fixtures. You know, you're, you're again, you're, you're painting a picture, right? So you're trying to find the style that's gonna appeal to the most people. Now, they may come in, it's, it's interesting because, you know, door color, for example, we, I drive past a house that, that Maggie, we worked on with updating on um ridge and robin, we, robin eggs blue, robin egg blue we yeah. picked a great door color right? right and they um bought, whoever bought the house loved what we did with the house but they changed that color uh, yeah that so so, i just um i just painted my house after 20 years of being in it needed a new paint job and the gentleman helped me and i went from that beige that everybody has that beige to a white house with a navy shutter i used to have a green shutter now it's a navy shutter and i paint and my front door used to be forest green and it's a call it's a color called follow the yellow brick road and boy do you see that yellow door 
when right. it pops. It right. just pops against the white in the Navy. It just, boom. I just, yeah, just, I, great. just so you know, I had Tom pull over when I found that color for you. Yes. I said, stop the car because <laughs> I need to send this to me. It's great. But, so if you need a yellow, follow the yellow brick road. It's the a great yellow. Color. Very cool yellow. I guess but, what it has. My point with the color of the door that they changed is that with the light fixture, we don't need to make it look, you know, it doesn't need to be a light fixture that somebody's going to go, that was a thousand dollar light fixture and I want to keep it, I need to keep it. When they're looking at the house, you just need to present a style that is going to appeal to them. Now, six months later, they may change that light fixture because they want something more specific, but it's done its job, like that door color we were talking about and getting them through the front door, looking at your house and, and, and you know, realizing that it's a space that they could live in. That house had multiple bits on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, what do we do with kids' books and toys? Well, um, we often will stage a space um, for, you know, we stage kids' rooms. So we use kids' books, we use toys, but what we try to thin out of that um, pile is plastic toys, right? Mm -hmm like the real, you know, garish colored plastic toys, those should go away. Soft cover books, those should go away. What we like to use is like wood, classic wood toys, um, games and hardcover kids books for staging, all acceptable. And I love the books. We, I love putting a book on a desk or on a yeah. nightstand for a kid, the books that I remember is even that, those books are still Around. relevant to that. Plastics, they call them. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's been my experience that whenever you're packing up children's toys and especially toys, never do it when they're home. <laughs> because no. they're like, what are you doing with my, they haven't played with the toy in years, right. but all of a sudden their little Susie Sunshine doll they want and you're trying to pack them up to get rid of them. And they're following you like, what happened to my doll? And so they know. So it's always best to do that when they're in school or when they're not around, that kind of thing. And you know, um, to the point, you're, you're absolutely right, Maggie. And what we've seen oftentimes is that when after it's done and the parents are all upset about doing it, the kids come into the room and they're like, I love it. I want our next house to be like this. I love that my room is this neat, you know? It's just a thing that they haven't experienced before. Um, so. I agree with you. Somebody asked us, you know, a stage home can be hard to live in. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even with children. Uh, is it okay to stage for photos, which we love, of course, and then return it to, uh, to a new normal? Well, the goal is to hopefully sell it in a week so that you can leave it staged and you get out of the house for a weekend and we can get it sold, boom, boom, boom. And then we could probably destage it. But um, I think it's probably that it would be helpful if at least for the first two weeks it stays staged. I, yeah. I would not agree with that. Yeah, I mean, what we typically tell clients is your first week or two, you gotta be strict with maintaining the staging. After that, after you have your offers and you're in attorney review, um, you can relax it. But we wouldn't say take it away completely because the staging helps you with, um, you know, appraisal, appraisal, um, you know. It's just buttoned up. It just it's, checks it's, all the boxes for people. Believe it or not, wait, even, inspection, yeah. even in inspection, it helps. And at any point along that process, a deal could potentially fall apart and you got to start back on oh, the market. Wow. And do you want to have to pay to have your house completely restaged when all you would really need if we left it in place, you could do the touch up yourself as the homeowner and say, okay, let me get this stuff back into play. Right. And also just so you know, we take pictures of what the staging is for clients and say, when you have someone come through or having an open house, make it look like this if you if it's been you know lived in which is what everybody obviously does in their home so there's there's a guide for everybody you know after we do the bed and judge everything up to to return it to that just for when agents come through and yeah. potential buyers yeah to take a picture take a picture of how the bed's made right you know so many of us as you had your baby in the picture before um are dog lovers and cat lovers. Mm -hmm. 
how do you deal with pets with staging? Do you, you know, the dog loves to jump on the couch. We've just brought in a staged couch. You know, how do you deal with pets? Yeah. Put a sheet down. Tell me about that. Yeah. When well, first thing we do when we start the staging is we hug and pet all the the willing the babies animals. that are in the house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we understand people have pets, right? And, sure. um, you know, I think one of the things that people need to be careful about is you don't want people to walk into your house and smell the dog or a cat or, you know, that, that not, unfortunately, not everybody's a pet lover and not everybody is understanding about that. And so you really need to, to be careful about that. Um, you know, you mean like litter boxes and yeah, spices and dirty diapers and all that stuff. Exactly. Um, so that's one aspect, but yeah, we, you know, we understand that people are going to use the furniture. We ask them to keep it clean for your showing. Mm -hmm. if, if you can't keep your dog off the couch, throw a, throw a sheet on it while you're relaxing at home and you have to be prepared at you know the beginning of each day yeah. get that stuff all you know away in this market you're looking at you know like you said a couple of days of showings and and hopefully you're under contract but in other markets where it's a little more prolonged you have to be prepared to take your animals with you when you're leaving the house for showings a hundred percent now, gentlemen, I can't believe it's almost the top of the hour. Time flies when you're having fun. Yes. Um, somebody wants to reach you just to have a consult with you. Uh -huh. um, I think if we shared our screen, they would. Let me just share where you can reach them. Because I think that's important. If you have questions about, um, okay, what's the next steps? Or maybe they could come take a look and give me a little advice, et cetera. Be our pleasure to, um, this is how to reach Tom and Bob. Yeah, and that's direct to us. So that's, that's direct to you. So it's 917-213-9108. Right. Yep. And it's Tom, T-O-M, Partello, P-A-R-T-E-L-L-O at srhomesonline.com. Yep. Your stagewrighthomes.com. And if somebody wanted to see your portfolio or somebody wanted to talk to you about their own home, they could just reach out to you directly. It'd be, you know, we do this as a service for our clients, ladies and gentlemen. So it's our pleasure if you, even if you're not listing your home, please don't hesitate to call these gentlemen. They're fabulous. And, you know, they can lead you down the right path of, you know, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And it could be that you are thinking about selling and you're thinking about selling today, next year, five years. It doesn't matter. Trends can change. But you know, even listen, decluttering can take a really long time. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to them because they could probably give you a plan. We could give you a plan as well, but they could give you a plan to just get you started. It can be overwhelming at times, I promise. Um, <laughs> but, uh, a, a, you know, day at a time, a room at a yep. time, it all gets uh, done. Um, one last question. Once wall it. hangings are removed for repainting, put them back up. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, actually, this is a very good question. I love this. So um, if you are going to paint a room to prepare it to, you know, to as part of prepping your house for sale, yes. do not, um, do not rehang pictures and do, you know, so tell the painter if it's not my crew doing it, which I hope it is, but um, if it's not my crew, tell them to remove the hooks, patch the holes, and do not hang back what you have because when we come into stage we like i said we will certainly use as, as much of what we can of a, of a client's you know furnishings and accessories and art mm -hmm. um but and we bring in art as well um but we would you know we wouldn't necessarily hang them where you had them before so um oh, very interesting yeah and we we try to use bigger bigger fewer pieces of bigger art so okay. where somebody ha might have like a lot of little pieces on a wall collage, like a collage, a collage we would come in with one big sort of <clears throat> canvas um type art and and use that um in that space so you know if you're if your goal is to stage your house and get it ready for sale have the painters remove all the hooks stack your pieces because we'll we'll shop them on staging day 
and hang what we we can use and then you would end up putting you know packing up the rest awesome so that's a great that, question that is a great question and my one last plug because we've got we're right at the top of the hour so i just want to say one thing um if you are thinking about uh selling your home smart money selling now because real estate is cyclical and for the last year, we have seen inventory. We're still, you know, all the agents on my team, they're one of 10 offers or one of 12 offers or one of 15 offers. It's, it's, you know, it's a war out there. So I just wanted to give you a little idea of what we're looking at today. If you lived in Maplewood today, there are 16 homes on the market. That's it. 16 homes in the whole town. This time last year, we had 52. So think about those numbers. If you live in South Orange, Last year, we had 47 homes on at this time. Today, we have 12. There's only 12 homes on in the whole town of South Orange. That is not a lot of inventory. Millburn Short Hills, we had 120 homes on the market this time last year. Right now, we're sitting at 39. 39. This, there's no, there's nothing to sell. And interest rates are really low. Um, Summit, if you live in Summit, this time last year, 78 homes. Today, 34. Chatham Borough, a um, little bit better. This time last year, 33. This year, 22. Uh, in the township, though, last year they had 60 homes on the market. Right now, we only have 20. So there is just not a lot of inventory on. So if you were even thinking about it, I keep saying smart money selling. That you know, as much as we were in a last year's market was like steady, but the minute March hit, boom, prices took off and inventory really started getting um, eaten up. Now, if you're overpriced, you're still not gonna sell. Even in the best market, if you're not selling in this market, your price too high. It's as simple as that, price cures all. So keep that in mind if you are thinking about it. It is January, usually uh, uh, we start to see right after Super Bowl, um, people are thinking about selling and they're waiting for spring. Don't, um, this is spring right now, and the prices are really, really good. So if you have questions about that, it'd be my pleasure to be able to, to talk to you about that as well. Um, I have, somebody wanted Westfield. I don't have it in front of me, but I promise you, I will get it to you. Um, <laughs> it is 8.02. Um, sorry, we're ending two minutes late, but thank you all so very much for coming. Tom and Bob, thank you again. If anybody needs anything that has come on the call, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Maggie Miggins group. It's our pleasure. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Maggie. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.